What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and I've managed to tear myself away from medieval engineers for just about long enough to get working on some of the bits in Space Engineers again. So I've been working on the version 2 of the Hunter Seeker but as that's not quite ready, quite a lot of work going on, I've also adapted that sort of idea into something else. So what I have in front of me here is obviously not that, this is the version 1 Hunter Seeker which I'm just going to use for demonstration purposes because it actually makes a, a perfectly passable fighter as well. And what we're going to do is go and check out and base over there. And as you guys will probably guess, things are not going to go quite as well for us as we'd hope. So we're going to just come on there. I'm not going to particularly hang about either. I'm not going to go absolute max velocity, but I, you know, decent speed. And we're going to see what happens as we come into range. Now, what we're coming into here is obviously going to try and shoot us out the sky and is set up to start engaging at 800 meters. So you can see they've responded to us now. And I'm going to try my best. Yeah, I think it might actually be too late for trying my best. We've already been hit. Um, yep, and unfortunately one downside or one side effect of the uh, destruction that these turrets can offer is that they do cause some FPS problems. <laughs> However, it looks like what we have remaining of that ship is literally just a few floating pieces. And... Let's just delete this so that they are no longer tracking on that. That The force with which they, which they hit stuff actually solves the problem of them being stuck tracking. Uh, so what's essentially going to happen with these things is everything that they've hit is now going to disappear out of range. And at that point, they can go back to their normal patrolling routine, which in this case is that they will go back to spinning around. This seems to be a byproduct of using the rotors, by the way. I don't know why it is that they seem to just want to spin indefinitely if you don't set rotor limit. But in this case, it actually works really well. So what I can do quickly here is show you how these things work. So we've got the same sort of central matrix on the back as I normally use. The difference here is I've actually worked out how to do the sensor blueprints myself. So we have a, uh, a selection of different ranges. So in the center here, this center sensor is uh, an 800 meter one with a very clear bounding box straight forward. Whereas these ones on the side are a thousand meters to enable it to start tracking before things actually come into firing range. Uh, other than that, I've used that same sort of design as I used on the side of the Leviathan. The only difference here is that these obviously have a much wider arc of fire. They will turn a full 360 degrees horizontally and they will turn about 240 to 280 degrees um, vertically. I haven't worked it out, but it, it's a good range of movement. Obviously, they go the flip the whole way around and point down this other side. Other than that, you can see pretty clearly how they've been made, to be honest. Um, the only thing that I've put on these which wasn't present on the other ones, other than having two, one on top of each other, is we have this central section here which is designed for refueling. Uh, so there's a full large cargo container in there, everything's hooked up ready for survival. But also we have this perimeter beacon, and that will turn on when it detects something within firing range. And so it alerts you as to, as you can see here, all three of them have something within firing range. And so they've alerted base essentially that these things have found something and they're going to try and shoot at it the only reason they're not shooting at anything now is because they've actually got so many targets they don't know what to shoot at uh, it's still going to be a, a uh, sort of byproduct and downside to the sensor use you can see that all of those sensors are on now something's gone out of range they are turning into track on something else but again it's it's tiny pieces a mile away so they're all of the sensors are lit up and they're never really going to get much of a chance. There's probably a single block floating somewhere over there. Uh, they might just get a shot off. But yeah, you get the idea. They are lovely and stable. Well, that one back there actually looks like it found something to shoot at, but of course the asteroid is in the way, so it's not actually getting to make the shot. This one, oh yeah, there you go. So they do occasionally, if they get a single target at range, they will keep on going for it, and that will, that will kill whatever it is out there. Uh, it might take it a few shots, but it will get it. So that's the kind of gist of things for today, guys. The main deal with these was simply how efficient they were. So they will track ships very, very quickly, and you don't have to make many mistakes before they will have you out of the air, um, especially if you make the mistake of traveling in a straight line, either towards or away from them, from them for any length of time. They are quick enough to track, as you can see here, that they will get you. 
So that's the idea for today. Hope you found it interesting. I will go into a little bit more detail as far as the sensor setup is concerned when we look at Hunter Seeker version two. A little sneak peek here. This is the basic design for the time being. There, oh, hang on. And yes, it's fully functional. He's probably having a go at exactly the same thing. And this guy has got some insanely good tracking on him. So hopefully this will be a step forward in the Hunter Seeker design. Otherwise, uh, if you found it interesting, if you enjoyed, please hit like, please hit subscribe. It really helps me and the channel out. I will stick my blueprints for these sensors up in the links below. So check those out if you fancy having a try around with these sensors with the massive range on them. They work perfectly, so I don't really understand why we don't have this option already. But there you go. And otherwise, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I will catch you next time.